I've been wanting to revisit the Czech for a pretty long while, because I remember it to be an absolute beast of a weapon with some nasty usability issues. And you know what? It still is a beast of a weapon. And today, my friends, I got a couple of builds lined up for you. Something cheap, something affordable, something that a more casual or a newer Tenno can get into. But fear not, my friends, we also got the end game set up. And we're gonna take this one to Steel Path. Prime mods, galvanized mods, a ribbon, essentially the works. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly approach, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. As always, my name is Lazar and this is the check. Or check, check, or it's weird, I don't know how, anyway. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. But first, big ass disclaimer. I'm still recovering from a pretty nasty cold, so if I sneeze, cough, and otherwise sound more off than usual, well, now you know why. Also, there's gonna be my baby running around because she's having a great old time. Mwah, daddy's little girl. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, the check cord, the Kuva check cord does not have a normal counterpart, weirdly enough. Now, this is a projectile-based attack, it's a semi-automatic trigger. Take a look at the projectile, the travel speed of the projectile is eh, and there's also a drop-off. But let's be honest, you're not gonna hit targets more further away than this. Just aim slightly, ever so slightly, above enemies' heads, and you should be all good. This is a flintlock lo rifle. You guys know flint? Lock rifles, like when the West conquered the, the other guys and the Indians were there, and I, I don't know, it's a flint rock rifle, anyway. Now this projectile is special because upon contact it will be detonating in a 2.9 meter explosion. Right, so with the floor and with all, whatever else, it doesn't really matter. And yes, the explosion does go through walls, so do bear that one in mind. Your magazine is 11 and your reload is really slow at 3 point something seconds, 3.3 I believe. But at least, at the very least, you get a really, really cool animation. Allow me to demonstrate. Stop aiming, stop, stop aiming, there we go. Take a look at that, boom, boom, and she flips it around. Absolutely fantastic. Now, there's one more benefit to the weapon. Headshots deal 50% more. So yes, direct shots deal 50% more headshot damage. You gotta bear in mind there's two damage components to this projectile. One, the projectile physically making contact with a target and that will account for most of your damage and two, the explosion. So if you're gonna say something like, hey, but explosions don't have headshot multi because they did the thing, no, you still go for headshots. Now, I think that's pretty much it. Let's hop into stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. <coughs> This being a Kuva weapon, you gotta format five times if you want all the mastery points out of it. Do you need to format five times? No, you don't. Free format will be more than enough, but if you wanna get the mod capacity 80 out of 80, which you don't need, and again get all the mastery points, you should definitely do so. As for a progenitor, well, there's a bit of a debate on this one. I would suggest you go for something like Toxin because it's most versatile. Mine is electricity. I should change it to heat or toxin, but you know what, I don't have the time, so we're gonna go with mine, which is an electricity roll, and it's a pretty high roll if I remember correctly, a 57.6 roll, which is not bad at all. Now, where was I? Oh yes, the empty arcane slot, you should definitely unlock this one because it's more power. It's as simple as it is, and you got two fantastic options, you can go for dead head, yeah, you get 30% to headshot multiplier on top of the 50% you get because of the weapon, yeah, which is super cool. Uh, you can go with Dexterity if you want, if you're going to use it in tandem with your melee, but more importantly, Merciless really helps you out here, even though they took away the ammo part, which was kind of not a great move on the developer's part, you still get that 30% reload, okay? So with this one just plugged in, your reload goes down for from 3.3 to 2.5, which is semi fixes one of the weapon's usability problems because as you saw while it may deal a truck and a half worth of damage and it does it does have a lot of usability issues i'm talking about fire rate magazine uh ammo reserves reload speed so you're gonna have to content with all of this but trust me it will definitely be worth it accuracy is fantastic yes yeah, maximum ammo you saw ammo pickup is 15 fire rate is 1.17 that's very Relevant again unless you fix the recall and you can fix the recall by unlocking the excellent slot and go with something like stabilizer 60% weapon recall as you saw there it kicks like a bloody mule with this one It feels more streamlined now if you're gonna go endurance runs if you want to stay level thousands in the missions in that case You gotta take into account ammo issues. Will they pop up? Yeah, so go with vigilante supplies 
Yeah, this will fix some of them, not completely. If you're gonna go ham nowadays and just shoot at everything, you know how it used to be fun? You know, you're gonna run out of ammo. My favorite, however, to this day, still remains terminal velocity. 60% projectile flight speed makes it easier for me, uh, your average everyday player, to land my headshots. And because of the weapon's bonus and the critical chance and critical multiplier it has, it's imperative to go for headshots. And if you don't know all the multipliers at play when it comes to a headshot, it's not as simple as, a hey, more damage, even though that it is kind of that simple. I got a full and detailed guide on how critical multipliers apply in Warframe and critical chance and all whatnot. There's a link in the cards right now, so I don't have to speak on that seven or eight minutes more. Magazine 11, noise alarming, because, you know, Riven Dispo is too. Honestly, I was expecting nada for this one, simply because it is a very powerful and popular weapon. Riven Disposition 2 is the Riven Disposition I hate the most. You know why? It's not one, so I can completely ignore it and go about my business mod it with whatever I want. It's not free, so it's super worth it. It's right in the goddamn middle, which means it's kind of worth it. And that is just bloody sickening. So yes, it is worth going for Rivens on the chat code. You guys want a uh, step priority? You want, you want a step priority? All right, fine. Multi-shot will be your priority number one. That is it is with most weapons. Your priority number two will be critical damage. Yes, critical damage. And your priority number three will be critical chance. Or if you're not going endurance runs, raw damage. You can also go for element, element but forget about that. What else? Why? Yeah. Damage, critical chance, sky high, 50%. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Beautiful. Multiplier 2.3x, status chance 27%, which is low. Which is low, because you're not putting that many shots into your targets. With a common, average, everyday build, you're going to one-shot super high-level targets. You will! So why would you even bother with status applications? And uh, if you want to go for a viral, that sometimes also proves a little bit problematic, but you'll see more in the demonstration. The damage is impact by default, 260 impact. And you also got electricity because I chose an electricity progenitor. It's a 58% roll in this case. What you got to bear in mind, that both the impact damage right here, okay, the total of 409 and your radial attack of 167, please notice the damage difference, yes? Projectile hitting target does a lot of damage, explosion, not so much. Even though the cool part of the explosion is the fact that it's got a fall off of 30%. That's good. That's good. 2.9 meter range, that's bad. When you got a small base, if you want to increase the range of the explosion, something like Prime Firestorm or the normal Firestorm, uh, 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 you don't get that much anymore. Unfortunately, because they nerf Firestorm and the secondary version of this one as well. So, it's not super worth it anymore. Still worth, just not super worth anymore. Alright, where was I? Yes, this is the explosion. It does puncture slash and electricity because they got electricity progenitor. And again, this does the most amount of damage and this the littlest amount of damage. Uh, you see, there's a pretty big discrepancy there. One thing that I forgot to mention is that both the projectile physically hitting the target and the actual explosion have a forced impact proc. That's my baby. A forced... Im yeah, you, you don't like forced impact procs, don't you, baby? Yeah, so forced impact for both this and this. That means two guaranteed impact procs on the target with each and every single shot, which is absolutely fantastic. Why? Well, let's hop into a standard build, shall we? And you got yourself some damage acceleration, multi-shot with split chamber, critical chance and critical damage for the use of critical delay and vital sense. I also got Argon Scope on this one, but this is your option slot. Plug into this one whatever you feel more comfortable with. Actually, more critical damage would be a tad smarter. So instead of this, instead of this, you can go with bladed rounds and you get yourself another 120, which is the same amount as vital sense. The problem with this one, you gotta get a kill and it's one laming, yada yada, etc. No, this is your standard vital slash build because I know you guys want to see something like this. You got your malignant force together with your rhyme rounds, forming vital, vital electricity and internal bleeding on this one over hunter munitions for obvious bloody reasons, yes? Fire rate, 0 0.9. Internal bleeding, you get to double the benefit, yes? Even if you're... Even that your critical chance is guaranteed now. Internal bleeding, still better than hunter munitions. 100% over it, yes? Yes, for... Well, it should be obvious by this point. So anyway, this will be version number one of the build. We're going to test it like so, so you can see the performance. And then we're going to change things up a little bit because I, this is not the build I honestly recommend. This is just something I feel forced into demonstrating. Excuse me for a sec. <coughs> God damn it. All right. I go for headshots because, like, headshot weapon. Rare. 
will be the occasion where you will not one shot a super high level 120 corrupted heavy goon. As you can see the bleeds are outstanding with the normal average everyday build. Honestly one shots are expected out of this weapon. Now those were straight up headshots and let's be honest you're not always gonna get a headshot right? Yes baby mama. You're not always gonna get a headshot so let's do body shots as well alright? More console shots and all whatnot. When you go for body shots you will feel the difference. This is the honest truth because you're not getting that bonus headshot multiplier. It does make a huge bloody difference so again if you can go for a headshot definitely go for a headshot you won't see that big of a difference when it comes to the end game setup simply because that one has more raw power but again keep in mind if you can go for a headshot go for a goddamn headshot and watch them explode like so all right that's it for the vital slash setup or a vital slash setup I believe this is not the way to play this weapon I believe that you should forget about it and you should go for the biggest wallop that you can out of the weapon. I believe that especially up until level 150-ish enemies, you should just simply annihilate them with a single shot. And the build would look something like this. And we made a whole lot of corrosive on the weapon with infected clip. This combines with the weapon's electricity and now it makes corrosive damage. We also added more multi-shot with vigilante armaments and more critical chance with argon scope. Blade around still here, everything else is still here. And this is the hammer approach that I simply enjoy more in gameplay. It's gonna scale worse than Viral Slash, but it's a whole lot more satisfying until then because it just hurts them a whole lot more. As you will see, as I will demonstrate you. And besides, red numbers on your screen, don't you? Ooh, there it goes! You see, I can't quantify how satisfying that actually... There it goes. Is. How can I explain to you that that to me is more important than... Oh, it scales better. I don't care how well it bloody scales. I don't have time to do level 7000 and whatever else. And this again is a introductory level setup. This is the setup I recommend to you because it's just absolutely insane and is as simple as that. You gotta get a kill to get the extra critical damage as you probably know by this point. Aim those shots carefully 100% and then absolutely annihilate your targets. I didn't even know the Chakur could send enemies flying until I tried it again. And my friends that's pretty much it for the new player portion of the guide. Now let's say you got more expensive Mods, okay, you got yourself galvanized mods, you got yourself prime mods, you got yourself even a ribbon. You can opt to go for something like this. Again, we're talking about uh, viral and slash through the use of internal bleeding. Bane mods I do not enjoy in the game. You can go for a bane mod if your goal is to simply access the highest amount of damage you can. Yes, yes, daddy. What can I do for you? What can daddy do for you? Wait, wait, go to your mama, play with your ball. Yes, you, you don't like bane mods. Daddy doesn't like them either. It's okay, it's okay. Maybe they'll fix them sometimes. Now, you can plug this one out and you can go with Galvanized Aptitude. Galvanized Aptitude on this one works. Which part? On the direct damage. You're gonna get the bonus damage on this one, right here. This part will get you the bonus damage from Galvanized Aptitude. That will work. Not the explosion because these mods are made not to get you the bonus damage on explosions, all right? So it half works, but again, most of your damage comes from the direct impact. So it's worth using instead of the Bane mod. Now, the reason why I'm not using it is that most of the time I'm one-shotting everything. And if I don't have status effects already on my targets, I'm not going to be getting myself the bonus damage from Aptitude. Unless, of course, they're clumped up together, the explosion gets some statuses on them, and then, of course, I will get that bonus from Aptitude. And the Riven? This is absolutely bloody fantastic. Minus damage to Corpus, honestly, I do not care. Because the thing about the Corpus, they don't have a whole lot of damage mitigation, like 94% of their units. The problem with them, they're a lot more agile, and they deal a whole lot more damage, and they have all these quirky, gimmicky abilities as well. They're a pain to deal with but they don't have actual true damage mitigation actual powerful damage mitigation and of course primary merciless like this argument i made before i'm gonna remake it now merciless simply because i want the 30 percent reload deadhead would be smarter from a damage perspective but i want that reload speed it kind of helps out with the long reload and in the standard build as well you can sacrifice something like vigilante armaments for some reload speed if you simply don't like the way the weapon handles because that's the main issue with this weapon it's not that it's not powerful jesus it's powerful it's hella powerful but it's got one too many usability issues doesn't mean you can't fix them though now we're gonna have to get a kill it's a galvanized setup and all whatnot we're gonna have to get a couple of kills for the weapon in order to be in full swing 
Now, this is a Vital Slash build, so the vast majority of its power will come from slashes, but most of the time, you're not gonna get to see the slashes simply because the direct impact damage will be finishing off your targets. Obtaining slashes for like half a million and upwards is not uncommon with a build such as this as the weapon absolutely wrecks whatever stands before you. The problem is, it wrecks from the single hit, so you don't get to see the rest of the damage. This is how powerful the check can get. It's hard for me to pronounce checkur, checkur, I don't even know if that's right. Now you can bump up the level to 165, see if that makes somewhat of a difference. It's not really gonna make much of a difference, but sure, why not? I mean, still, a one-shot is a one-shot, is a one-shot, is a one-shot, is a one that that guy died for like collateral damage there just from the explosion and again the explosion is not the big deal on this one now we can find tougher enemies than this so let's head on over to steel path and let's see how the check handles it welcome to steel path my friends now let's see what the kuva check can do against these high level enemies so uh, yeah it's gonna do the same thing it was doing earlier absolutely annihilate stuff but it should be said, it's harder to hit moving targets with a headshot, so do bear that one in mind. Uh, you're gonna be able to clear steel path with a check or like a hot knife through butter, honestly. It's really a non-issue. Steel path doesn't really represent a uh, problem with, for this weapon. The problem that this weapon has, again, is usability. So a whole lot of players are simply not gonna like the fact that you gotta reload. It, it takes so long to reload, you gotta reload kinda often. And the fire rate is not fantastic. She kicks like a bloody mule. So some 1.4 million bleed there. Just, just saying. Okay, just saying. Just saying. But if you can get over the usability issues that good old check has, you're not gonna have any issue whatsoever. One shot even on the capture target. And as you guys know, the capture target has bonus mitigation and all that. It's a corpus, though, so how much mitigation can he have? Uh, what else is there to say? Not a whole lot. This is a viral slash approach. So, wait, is that, what is that? Is that like a, whatchamacallit? Oh, it's just the stalker. 2.6 million bleed there. You saw that? You saw the 2.6 over there? And you can go even higher than that. Don't think it was a headshot bleed. It's easier with this build to go for body shots, right? Simply because of the raw strength it has. Let's wait for the stalker or head on back to the simulacrum. Whatever you guys want is fine. Now here's the shadow. Hey, yeah, buddy. Long time no see. You remember me? I don't think he does. I don't think he ever cared about me so much. I got everything I wanted from the stalker. Oh, wow. That was a single shot on the stalker. From the check. I think I missed the first one. I think I got everything I wanted from the Stalker in like in the first two years of my Warframe gameplay. Guys, uh, that's enough, right? I don't know what else to show you here, so let's hop on back to the Simulacro. Now, this is gonna be one of those rare occasions when I'm actually gonna say, you know what? It's okay to go with Galvanized Scope as long as you are the type of player that keeps reliably and consistently rolling into headshots. I'm not. I'm not one of those guys. The problem with Galvanized Scope is the fact that it doesn't have any stack decay. Essentially, when that timer runs out, though a 12 second timer, you go to zero. So you get a full stack reset. And no, my friends, that is not a bug. That is as the developer intended. That's the problem with Galvanize Scope. But if you're a sharpshooter, go for this one. Again, this is a more jackhammer approach, a whole lot of raw damage. You also have the option of uh, replacing multi-shot in this one as well. So you can take off some of the flat damage or some of the critical damage, which I do not recommend. And you can go for something like um, uh, more multi-shot with Vigilante Armaments. Never forget the value of multi-shot. Uh, jackhammer approach, of course, one kill to get it to full speed and all whatnot. Now we got all the buffs going, a single stack, 184,000, 186,000, a whole, I don't know, half a million thousands, there was also the Panzer Volpa Phyla with me, that should be said, and I do believe that she applied a couple of vital procs to the target. So we're gonna unequip her. If you prefer the raw strength approach, I believe this is simply more satisfying in gameplay, but we gotta understand and accept the fact that it's not gonna scale as well as something like Vital Slash. As nasty as that does definitely sound. This is the kind of damage you can expect a one shot galore, no problem whatsoever. Beautiful, beautiful. I know you guys like the red numbers, and that's because of Galvanized Skull. 300,000 damage, no problem whatsoever. As for Warframe buffs and synergies, honestly, this guy doesn't really need any more damage. How much more of a one-shot do you want your one-shots to get? 
But if you're talking simply raw force, you're talking about the absolute highest weapon buffs, you go with Mirage Prime as per usual. You can go Viral Slash if you so desire. You can go raw damage. It doesn't really matter all that much. As for Sentinel buffs, I wouldn't take a Sentinel and get the crit buff on this one. I don't think it's worth it considering you already got plenty of crit on the weapon. Get yourself a Panzer Vulpophila, she will be applying those viral procs, which means you are free on your weapon to build something else. Corrosive, heat, or whatever else you desire, as long as you get the... Uh, and understand the fact that you will not see super reliable procs from the Vulpophila. She does her job, but sometimes she's a bit flaky and all whatnot. As for the Warframe build itself, when you're dealing with heavily armored targets, corrosive projection, definitely the way to go. Please do not feel forced into this one. If your build calls for something like, I don't know, uh, energy siphon is great for newer players or rejuvenation or whatever else, simply go for the aura of your choosing. <coughs> Arcane Avenger, mm. yes and no, you got plenty of crit, but you know what? We can stack more on top of more so we can get to even higher critical tiers. Keep in mind that in Warframe, you got more critical tiers than free. I know that on your screen you just see yellow, orange, and red, but above red, technically there's an infinite number of critical tiers, and again, you can find that information in my full critical chance critical damage guide. So you can go for stuff like this. Arcane Acceleration on this one, no, not really. Again, take your time, aim However you want, just get that goddamn headshot. More flat damage you can get with something like Arcane Rage, but considering the amount of flat damage we have on our weapon at this point, it's really pointless. Something that would be good would be reload speed, yeah? But unfortunately, we don't really got that. You got Arcane Momentum, okay? This one gives you two sniper rifles, and it's fantastic for a auto-fire build on the uh, Vectis or Ve the Vectis Prime. Actually, and you also got Arcane Awakening. Problem with this one, it works for secondary weapons. So honestly, when it comes to Arcanes, use your first one for your Warframe. Something like your Energize, Armor, and all whatnot. For the sake of... I don't know, more damage, you can go for something like Arcane Rage. Let me know in the comment section down below, what do you suggest for Arcanes? Now that it needs more power than this. Alright. Uh, let's go with level maximum, Corrupted Heavy Goons, not that it's gonna make an actual difference, I'm gonna let them hit me so I can get my glorious buffs. Activate Mirage's in power and her free ability, and one more time for the best animation in Warframe. Boom. Go up into the air. Guaranteed one shots. Two million. Five million damage. 2.8 million damage. You can pause the video to see exactly what were the numbers were. Yes, yes, Dada, yes, yes. Can, can, you, can you let Dada finish the vid? Thank you, sweetheart. No? Okay. I'm not sure if she'll cooperate, but we'll keep on going. Let's see what kind of... Okay, they're all gone. Damn it, from the explosion there. 4.9 mil. And whatever thousands. As you can see, my friends, this, without a doubt, is an extremely, extremely powerful weapon. It has many quirks because of the usability issues, but you know what? If you can get over that, you will have yourself an absolute powerhouse of a weapon that can pretty much do whatever you want in Warframe, including idle on hunts. You want to do idle on hunts? Drop all status chance on all trigger effects. Simply build for raw damage. Raw radiation damage, critical chance, critical damage, multi-shot, and you're good to go. You will make mincemeat out of those Synovias. <coughs> And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it. I'm aware this one dragged on a little bit longer than usual. I would love to hear what you think about it in the comment section down below. As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And you can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting me, supporting us via Patreon. There will be a link in the cards, upper right portion of the screen, and in the description right now. And I do believe, my friends, that's it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.